I think the underlying problem was that they didn't think about what happens when you put an innovation in the wild. Hello and welcome to Architecture Corner. Hello Jean, uh, it's your first time on Architecture Corner. So glad to have you here. Thanks for having me, I'm uh, enjoying, enjoying being a part of this. What was Tay and You? Uh, Tay and You is the Twitter handle for an artificial intelligence uh, chatbot that Microsoft launched and then shuttered within about a day. Uh, due to the fact that it was, uh, it started making some really offensive tweets. So, what went wrong with uh, this uh, try with Tay? It uh, it appears, uh, although Microsoft claimed uh, that it was built with uh, filtering in place, uh, it appears that uh, whatever filtering is inadequate. Anything that Tay and you said would be allowed on most social networks. And it was not against policy on Twitter to say these things. So, but what was the underlying problem with Tay that uh, Microsoft didn't think of? I think the underlying problem was that they didn't think about what happens when you put an innovation in the wild. Uh, an innovation is not a lemming. You can't just, there aren't thousands of them that you can put out there and hope one of them survives. They had one and they should have taken better care of it. But they had the same concept in China with 40 million people that were using it and it worked there. What was the difference between China and the rest of the world? Uh, I think that offensive speech is much uh, less common in China. So Jean, you made some comments about uh, the um, uh, considering the potential for abuse. Yes, absolutely. Um, in, in my opinion, that is something that absolutely has to uh, be part of the design. Um, handling the intended use is, is almost trivial in comparison to the potentials for abuse, uh, particularly for something like pay. Um, Grieger wrote an article about fail fast. Is this a good example of fail fast, Grieger? Well, it's a good example of the fail fast fallacy. You Fail fast is kind of built on that you have multiple initiatives going on and a few of them are good and most of them are bad and your interest is weeding out the bad ones. But when it comes to artificial intelligence, it, it has to learn, it, it takes some time for it to grow and, and act correctly. Jean, you wrote an article after you read uh, Gregor's article. Yes, I was um, discussing the need to uh, not relearn things that you already know. Um, and, and again, at, when you're talking about fail fast, uh, it, it almost puts the wrong emphasis. The important thing is not the failure, but the learning. Uh, trial and error is one method, uh, and in some cases, it, may be the best method to learn something uh, about a product, about an innovation. Uh, but relearning uh, things that people have already learned, such as the internet is a hostile environment, uh, that can be counterproductive. There is an important point in that, Gene, and that is that some people are overemphasizing empiricism to the point where they're saying that, well, not in my experience, well, so you say. Yes, um, I think you made the comment on Twitter that it's almost a not invented here assembly, uh, where people are un unwilling to learn from someone else's example. And another thing that's probably applicable to this, Kazmir brought up the fact that a or similar experiment worked well in China. It's tempting fallacy to attempt to extrapolate from one environment across a multitude of environments and not acknowledge the fact that contexts are different. So China has a different language, 
different culture, different political system, even different writing system. But another question is if you can innovate without failure. But Edison said, I did not fail. I found 10,000 ways to not make a light bulb. Was Tay a failure or was it something else? A famous example of fail fast is the challenge to create the human powered airplane. Lots of people tried it, the plane crashed, they basically died. Fail. One guy, actually, he considered that he should make a plane that is easy to reconfigure and rebuild. So you can say that he failed fast because he tried and he rebuilt, tried and rebuilt. But he never ran out of money and he didn't die. So who's to say that he f failed? I think he learned fast and adapted fast, but he never failed. So uh, it's about uh, fail is not the problem. It's the problem if you don't learn from your failures. The problem is if you run out of time and money before you have learned enough. Jean, what's your thoughts about this? Well, I'll be honest, Casimir, your, your articles about failure and taking risks really resonated with me because you pointed out that you can take risks but you can also control the amount of risk that you're exposing. It's, it's one thing to make a five dollar bet versus a million dollar bet. Through with uh, Diane's video that she shared uh, because in her example you had a plan where you had a, a, just a cascade of, of assumption. So rather than validating an assumption and then building from there, you were essentially stacking assumption upon assumption upon assumption to where you, you multiplied your risk. And when you actually did conduct your experiment, there were so many ways that it could fail and so much cost involved in dealing with a failure. It's very hard to test everything from the beginning also. What is the real dangers? Do we know them? How do you even verify that an artificial intelligence system is behaving correctly? Because the whole point is that it's going to give you insights that you, that you didn't have before. Mm. What do you think, Jean? It's, it's interesting, I was reading something just uh, yesterday uh, because someone brought up that uh, IBM had an issue with Watson where they had uh, uploaded the Urban Dictionary so that Watson could be more natural, more real. And in that respect, it was something of a success, but then they had to uh, remove that information because Watson began cursing. I've also noted that in this urban dictionary there are a lot of incorrect definition that people put there as a prank. Exactly. There's certainly that danger as well. It's funny, it seems like those working with artificial intelligence are learning what parents already know, that uh, you can't cut something loose on the internet uh, without training, without a basis for being able to evaluate information to be able to evaluate what's appropriate to say when. Can we compare Tay with a toddler two years that just started walking and let her loose in New York? Exactly. And um, it's funny, uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, Microsoft briefly restarted Tay and uh, ran into another similar issue, parroting information that that people said without any filtering, any consideration of whether what it was saying was appropriate. So they added filtering against um, one kind of offensive uh, speech, but uh, then people attacked it with a second kind of offensive speech. What do you think, Gene? What should be done differently? You, know, you wouldn't walk into a casino and uh, blindfold yourself so you don't know what, what you're betting. Uh, neither should you make experiments where you're not sure what the downside is. Again, it, it's imperative that you take risks in order to learn, but it's also imperative that you know what, what risks you're taking and that you control it so that you live long enough to apply the lessons that you learn if, if you fail. In industrial robotics, there has been a development. 
it used to be that around the robots you had all these gates. And uh, as soon as someone entered the area, the robot stopped. Now the robots are so um, good detectors, agile and versatile, that you can actually have people and robots working together. together. Mm -hmm. and, and that's recent development. Mm -hmm. Jean, you have been writing a lot uh, with Gregor about innovation. This session was inspired by the fail fast. What can we learn of this? What are the final thoughts that we can share with the audience? I, I would say that um, the, the lesson from this is, is really the same lessons that people working in artificial intelligence are, are running up against, that uh, life is a messy. Uh, the rules as such are not always well defined, but there are a lot of shades of gray and a lot of judgment calls that need to be made. Um, it's, it's not easy. So there's baby steps that need to be made, um, and they need to be made in a thoughtful, intentional manner rather than just kind of naively uh, adhering to slogans like fail facts. You have to look at the underlying ideas there and uh, be aware of the nuances. Uh, so again, if you're going to make an experiment, it's not sufficient to say, well, I'm going to try it. You need to try it in a thought out manner. So um, it's been really nice talking to all of you. Thank you. Mm, thank you very much, Jean. It's really nice to hear you. And if you're watching, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We will be back next week with a new episode. Thank you.